For those of you who are curious, my firebox is pretty temporary. It's just a bunch of um, fire bricks or furnace bricks. These are extremely light and they are really good insulators. They're about four and a half inches wide and I have um, three inch and two and a half inch thick ones. So I have a two and inch, half inch thick one in the middle and then two three inch ones on the ends. And then I put another block, let's see, put another block here on the end. So like that. And then I've got, uh, let's see, two blocks here. So these are more of the two and a half inch ones. And then we have another one on the end here. And that is the fire box. So then the boiler just sits right on top here, like that. I have to move these in a little bit. Move those around. So those overhang a little bit. But it's really simple, and it's really temporary. I want to make a real, much better one, but uh, it works really good for a temporary one. And then I just take this insulation and stuff, and that goes on that end over there to insulate it, to have the um, gases that go, so the burner goes under here, and this is going to be all blocked up with this insulation. And so the fire heats, directly heats up the bottom of the boiler, and then the flue gases go over here, hit this insulation, go through the tubes there, and get rid of the rest of their heat, and then exit over here. All right, so now I've got my burner in there, and the glass and this insulation here on the end to direct the flue gases all um, up through the um, flue tubes in the boiler. So we can put this on here, and then I've also got my uh, fan and mixer uh, orifice assembly thing there. So this goes right here on there, and then I'll stuff some little bit of insulation around here or else some um, gases, hot gases come up around here and make it boil inside the tube there, which is kind of annoying because you can't see what level the water is at. So that goes around there. And then the piece of insulation goes here, but I'll put that in after we light it. Fill it up with water, and now we can just put the pressure relief valve in. So just screw that in. I've got some Teflon tape on there to make sure it's good and sealed. Alright, so now the boiler is all in, and the insulation is all in, and pressure relief valve. So it's all set up, so now we just got to fire it up. So I'll just close that valve there, make sure everything's closed. So first we'll just um, turn on the fan here. Let me just hook it up. Alright, that should be good. So now we got to take this block off here. At least this is the easiest way to light it. And then we'll just put the flame in there. Actually, let's turn it down even more. So open the gas up all the way and light it off. There we go. Now let's turn up the fan a bit until it gets to a nice flame. I think that looks pretty good. So now we just gotta put the block in. Ouch, it's really hot. And it's heating. So that's it. So we just gotta wait. Alright, so it's been about three and a half minutes and it's already building a ton of pressure. So keep that in about three and a half minutes. Alright guys, so with the new um Modifications to the um, burner, well, not to really to the burner, to the mixing chamber, and to the um, stuff like that. Putting the putting a baffle in there to keep the air from spinning around. I'm getting much more pressure, much faster now, and the it's able to keep up with the engine. So here we go. I have the new pressure valve set pretty high. And it has a lot of power. It's keeping up really well.
but as you can see, it's full throttle, and the engine's running, and it's building up pressure. So it's actually producing more uh, steam than this engine needs right now at 20 PSI. We'll cut it off a little bit there. Alright, we'll let the pressure relief valve blow here. I don't particularly like this one. It stays open. And it doesn't close. Very well. So I think it can't handle enough volume. I think that's what it is. So it's like partially closed a little bit, now it's building pressure again, so it's just going to stay like that. Until I get rid of some of the steam pressure. Whoa. The other thing I don't like about the pressure relief valve is it's kind of unpredictable. It seems to blow at different pressures sometimes. And then it just stays open like that. <laughs> so, it's probably not really made for steam.
Uh, gear came off. Or something. Yeah, let's see. What? I think the motor's getting, yeah, the motor's getting pretty hot and the hot glue is melting. That holds it together. <laughs> I'll have to redesign that a little bit. After running my engine for a while, I think there's a... It's like a cloud in here from all the steam and water vapor I put into the atmosphere. Yeah, I was running the steam engine probably an hour there. It was doing real nice. Just emptying the steam out. Makes a rumbling sound. Basically a bu a s bub a st a steam bubble forms down there, and then as soon as it hits the cold water, it contracts and just makes a pulsing. That's why it does that loud sound. But, yeah, that was fun. So, hope you guys enjoyed that long run of the steam engine. So, yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching.